Hey folks, today I'm going to talk about a problem that had been open for more than 35 years, namely the uh, determination of the computational complexity of multi-agent pathfinding on directed graphs. I believe that uh, most of you know what multi-agent pathfinding is, but let me just uh, repeat a formal definition of this problem. So we have given a set of agents A, we have an undirected simple graph G with vertices V and edges E, and we have an initial state modeled by an injective function alpha zero that maps agents to vertices, and we have a goal state modeled by another injective function alpha star. So the question is then, can alpha zero be transformed into alpha star by movements of single agents without collisions? Let's look at a small example. Can we find a plan to move the square agent to V3 and the circle agent to V2? Well, we could start to move the square agent to V2 and then to V3 and afterwards the circle agents to V2 and we are done. So, yes, we can find such a plan. Now, in general, it is well known that uh, deciding the existence of such a plan for the multi-agent pathfinding problem can be solved in cubic time, and the plans have a length that can be bounded also by uh, the number uh, that is cubic and the number of vertices. Uh, that is known since 84. <clears throat> well, in the same year, people already found out that when you want to find the shortest plan, then this is an NP-hard problem. <clears throat> well, a number of variations of this problem, in particular where you deal with parallel movements, have been studied, and a number of algorithms have been devised since then. The interesting thing is that uh, there is an open problem since before, namely what is the computational complexity of multi-agent pathfinding, when you move to directed graphs, which is a generalization of uh, the former problem. We will call that problem DIMEF. -F. So there is a partial answer, namely for a special case of uh, directed graphs. Uh, the DIMEF -F solvability is a polynomial e. problem when we have strongly biconnected directed graphs provided that there are at least two unoccupied nodes. So biconnected is an interesting uh, specialization of uh, strongly connected, and well, we, we don't want to go into that here. And well, the authors also plan to extend their analysis to other classes of digraphs, but um, as far as I know, they haven't done so. And so there's a big gap here between these special kind of directed graphs and the general kind. So what is the problem when you move to directed graphs? Well, in particular, when you move to directed acyclic graphs, then you may run into problems. And the reason for that is, well, for undirected graphs and for strongly biconnected graphs, one can always sort of restore a partial state after some agents have been moved to other places. And um, also, we don't have any dead ends when we have a solvable instance for these kind of graphs. This is completely different for uh, directed acyclic graphs, where you can easily fail and run into a dead end, as in our introductory example, where we have replaced the undirected edges now with directed edges. So if we start with a square agent, everything works out. But if we uh, start with a circle agent, then we might run into problems. As you can see, well, if we move the circle agents to V2, well, the circle agent has reached its destination, but now blocks the square agent, which cannot, uh, uh, cannot move to its destination. Uh, as you can see, the order of how you reach destinations might uh, matter a lot now. And what you have to do is, well, you have to look into the future in order to avoid such, um, such uh, blockings that cannot be um, reverted. 
and that makes uh, this kind of problem different from the one where you have undirected graphs and always can revert back to a partial former state. <clears throat> And this is the key for proving that Dimap F solvability is an NP hard problem. Uh, as usual, what you do in order to prove that you use a reduction and in this kind from three set. And here I show you an example reduction <coughs> for small three set formula. And the idea here is then if this formula is uh, satisfiable, then you can find uh, a plan and the other way around, if you can find a plan, then you have found um, a satisfying assignment. But we won't go into any details here. Um, what we have done now is we have um, uh, proven a, a lower bound <coughs> for the Dimap F problem. Now the question is, uh, what is an upper bound? And usually when you have proven NP hardness, it is, uh, um, in particular in such cases, then it's quite easy to come up with um, uh, NP uh, completeness because you now only have to show that this problem here is also in NP. For directed acyclic graph, we can uh, establish an easy upper bound. And the reason here is that uh, when you move an agent in a directed acyclic graph, it can uh, visit each node only once, which means that you have only polynomially many moves in each plan. And for this reason, then Dimap F uh, on DAX is NP complete. So for the more general case, we also have to deal with cycles. And there it is possible to generate exponentially many different configurations. And we don't know whether that might be necessary to solve the problem. So membership in NP is not obvious. But we can establish a loser upper bound uh, quite easily. And um, this loser upper bound is that Dimap F solvability is in P space. <clears throat> the reason for that is, well, we can reduce Dimap F solvability to propositional strips. And we know that plan existence in propositional strips is P space complete. Can we do any better than that? Well, we can establish a conditional upper bound for Dimap F. And, uh, well, what we know is that uh, cycles and digraphs are the culprits that stop us from proving the membership in NP. So let us have a closer look at, um, at cycles. And, um, well, <coughs> if we assume that the solution length for Dimap F on strongly connected digraphs is polynomial, and this sounds quite plausible. Then we can Easily prove that Dimap F solvability is NP complete and The reason for that is well each agent can only enter a strongly connected component once and leave it only once And so if there are short solutions for all the strongly connected components then there will be also a um, short solution for the overall graph. So let me conclude. Um, we have identified a problem that uh, had been open for 35 years. And the interesting question is, did anybody notice that it was open? Well, it turned out that I noticed it when I assumed that it had been already solved and used this result until I then found out, no, it has not been um, uh, tackled yet. Well, um, it might not have uh, uh, wide-ranging um, consequences, but uh, we know now that uh, we cannot hope to come up with a Kornhauser-style algorithm for directed graphs in, uh, in general. In addition, uh, all the results I showed you, they generalized to, uh, to variations of the multi-agent path uh, finding problem, in particular when you uh, deal with parallel moves. And finally, I identified another interesting open problem, namely whether the short solution hypothesis is true. Thanks for listening, and I'm now open for questions.